I'm Anne-Marie and today I am joined by George Halfin, who's an innate health coach. Um, she's a project manager at a national UK charity. She's a mum of two, co-chair of Nissa Nashim Essence, um, which brings Muslim and Jewish women together across the UK to help with social change. And um, she's part of, she, sorry, she's an associate of Unstoppable, which is a career coaching business. She's author of a blog called Confessions of an Overthinker, and she's an editor and contributor of A Life Less Serious, which launches on 8th of March, which is also International Women's Day. So welcome, George. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Um, so I'll start off by asking you what I ask um, most people that I talk to in the Three Principles community, which is how you came across the Three Principles and if it impacted your life in any way. Yeah, of course. Well, um, I came across the three principles in quite a funny way. I wasn't looking for it. Um, I was between jobs and my cousin's wife was working for a charity called Tikkun. And they were organising the first three principles UK conference in England. And um, they needed someone to, with event management experience to organise it. So that's what I found myself doing. And the funny thing is... Um, I did it like I did all jobs back then, taking it very seriously, indeed, <laughs> running around like a blue ass fly to the degree that um, when uh, they, they deliver the chairs for the conference, I, I, my colleagues were in a meeting and I was like, I can't possibly disturb them, you know, I have to do it myself, you know, very busy. And I was so, you know, rushing to help this man with these chairs <laughs> that I ran into a glass door and smashed my face in. And had, I, had, I had two black eyes that I had to just get checked out. And I welcomed people to the first Three Principles UK conference with two black eyes, um, which was quite funny, really, considering it's a well-being conference. Um, so I've never really lived that down. And, and I've got to say, if I'm really honest, I didn't see much of the conference because obviously I was too busy being busy running around. Um, but I did hear some really impactful uh, what I did hear, I found really impactful and I was really curious because I could see that people were really getting something out of it and I kind of wanted to know more. And um, as luck would have it, I was very fortunate that uh, Rabbi Shah Rosenblatt was looking for someone to uh, manage their uh, Three Principles program and he very kindly sent me to America <laughs> to see. So I spent time with Linda Ramos in Santa Clara County and I saw it taught in probation centres and with homeless people. And I saw it, I spent time with Amy Chen Mills and I, and, and I saw it taught at, at a school for kids who weren't in mainstream school. And then I ended up going to um, Lacona to spend time with Linda Ramos, uh, Linda Pransky, sorry. So I was very, very spoiled. And, um, and it was really interesting because, um, I don't know how much detail we were to go into this, but at that point, like I could see it was really helping people, but my intellect was really getting in the way. And I remember particularly that I went to a homeless shelter in Santa Clara County and I was with um, this um, Vietnamese nun called Sister Margarita who taught the principles there. And I remember she said to everybody in the room, oh, what's your weather report? And they were like stormy, cloudy, and they all you know, looked not, not in a good place. And there was one man that looked very well dressed and everything anyway. And, um, and I remember that she played like 20, minutes of a Sid Banks video and she played it and I'm making notes and I try and understand what's being said and I didn't understand what's being said but I'm making notes you know thinking that I was paying attention anyway she turns off the video and everyone looks slightly different <laughs> and they all come out um I asked her how long have these people been learning about this and she said well, it's their first session <laughs> and I said what's going on it but the man who who had come all dressed smart and everything, had learned about it for a while and he totally changed his life around. And I thought there must be something to this. And I, so I was very curious. I could really see the possibility for it. I just couldn't see it for myself. And I must admit, I was a bit of a hard nut because I, I spent, and I was very spoiled because I worked at Tikkun and there were women's sessions every week. And I would sit there and I would try and hear it and I would compare it to everything I knew. And so it took me quite a long time. Um, and and I'd say that the first time I really noticed something was just by accident. I was on the bus and I, I was 
feeling anxious and about, I don't know, did I leave the iron on or something? And then I noticed, oh, and I started to get palpitations like I used to get with things like that. And I noticed, oh, one minute, I'm tired. Maybe I'm just anxious because I'm tired. And just like that, I went. And so for me, it was very gradual, like moment to moment. Like I'd noticed myself not um, swearing and cursing so much when I was cooking and things like that. So it was very, very gradual. Um, and I would say it worked on me rather than I worked on it. Um, and I think that's really been how it's been for the last probably 11, 12 years, actually. So, yeah. OK, and um, you're also editor of a book that's coming out on the 8th of March. I know you've got a lot of ladies together across the globe. I think they're all from the Three Principles community. And you're launching the book on um, International Women's Day. And it's called A Life Less Serious. Would you like to tell me about that? What was this? Yeah, I'd love to tell you about that. Um, I'd say that um, I realised I didn't answer the last part of your question. And I'll answer both together, if right. I may, that. Really, as I said, over the last few years, I've seen really gradual but profound differences in my life. More in term, and I think it's funny, it's more that, I think other people are now me notice it, but I think I notice it more because it's more about, phys I don't feel so physically anxious as I used to. I don't buy into my thinking as much as I used to, and it's been just very gradual. And then uh, as I talk about, it, so the book it is um, called A Life Less Serious, and it's, it's, it's funny, I had had a name years ago. I had the name, the, the name came to me years ago, uh, a life less serious, and I wanted to do something with it. And then um, during lockdown, uh, when I was um, reluctantly homeschooling my kids, I was furloughed from my job, and my husband was in a bit of job, was in a bit of a state of flux. Um, I sort of saw myself going out serious thinking. And, and there's a, a, a quote by Sid Banks, and um, maybe I'll read, is it worth trying to read it to you? Um, it's from one of his older recordings. Let me just guess it here and I'll read it. Um, so it says, um, seriousness like life is a thought and this thought creates a feeling. And if you create the feeling of seriousness, then you're in a very serious state. You are liable to have stress and strain and sickness and the happiness and jealousy and everything else because of seriousness. Now, seriousness doesn't help you do anything in life but destroy yourself. Um, and to me, whenever I heard that, it really resonated with me because I could just see it all the time in every moment to moment experience in life. I'm all, all I'm ever up against is my seriousness. And then in this extreme situation of lockdown, I could see everyone else was in it too. And, but I knew, but I guess for me, I knew that it would pass and I knew. I could, I, 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 I guess because of my understanding, I had a very different relationship to the people I was, inter everyone, you know, other people that we, we knew at the time. Um, and, and I just saw there was something, a real possibility in um, sharing that with people that you, that just because things, life is serious and the, you know, the world is in a very serious situation, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you're not serious, but it doesn't mean you have to respond to your serious in this in the same way, and that you can have a different response to your serious thinking and serious circumstances. And so, because I'm so profoundly grateful that I started off at Lincoln and um, and with a really amazing conferences and going to them every year, and I knew lots of people. Um, that I knew that there, you know, lot there had there were lots of people with amazing stories to tell that I felt could really help people at this time. And so at three in the morning, when I woke up and I was like, and I had this idea and I started writing it at three in the morning what I was going to do and the vision for the book. And actually, it stayed true to that. Um, and that was in July. Uh, it was about two, almost two years ago now, in July 2020. So, um, but then obviously it took time because of my slightly busy situation <laughs> to be able to do anything about it um and then and then in November I started having conversations with people to see what they thought and if they'd be interested in writing and for me I think it was really interesting that I decided to be a women's book because it's not something I would naturally say or write a book of women's stories for women but I've had very profound experiences in women's groups um from you know being in Terry uh Rubenstein and Toby Waltz's uh 
women's groups um, at Tacoon every week and taking my baby along when I first had babies and being in a separate room and having really profound experiences there. But also more recently, um, I got involved with a, a Jewish Muslim women's network called Nisan Nishim. And I found, it's really funny, I got involved with them. And then I, uh, someone said, oh, you know about online groups, why don't you do an online group? And then I was on What the F is the Principles Facebook group. And I found a Muslim teacher and I approached her and said, would you like to uh, be part of Nissan Nishim with me and we can set up an online group for mums in a similar situation with us or women in a similar situation who may not be able to you know, go out as easily. Um, and that was before lockdown. So we set up a group called Essence as part of the network. And originally we were talking about festivals and reflecting on the true meaning for us. And now we're talking about life stages. But during lockdown, they asked us to um, run well-being sessions for their network. And so that's what we've been doing every month um, for the last two years. And really, it's a drop in space for women. And we really don't have an agenda. People just come. You know, we say, oh, what brought you here? And we just respond to that. And it's always uh, just such a beautiful experience. <laughs> And we never know what's going to happen. And somehow it's always, it's like, I can't, I can't tell you, it's, it's a really miraculous space. And, and so I really saw the power in that. And that's why I think in the end, I felt there's a power in women's stories. And there's also, you know, from reading a lot of Elsie's book, there's a real power in having short chapters. And in fact, I, I, I did a word, I'll sadly admit, I did a word count on her chapters to see how long it should be. So I figure that's as much as people take before they get full. And that's what I put in my brief to people. And that's when I started speaking to people. And um, yeah, it's been a really special experience. And I really could have, and, and, and I, it's funny, I had a list of people I wanted to ask. And then people said, oh, what about this person? And what about this person? So I met some incredible women and I got quite addicted with conversations. But I realized I had enough for a book and I had to stop. And um, I'm just really grateful for the incredible, um, honest and beautiful sharing that people have put in the book. And we've got a real range. We've got a poem, we've got several beautiful creative writing pieces, and then we have personal stories. And they really cover all aspects of life from menopause to relationship, so health issues, mental health, relationships, addiction, and also our place in the world. So we've got stuff on climate change and and other issues like that, and also people's work life. So hopefully it's covered. Obviously we can't cover everything with 28 people, but we've covered quite a lot. So hopefully there's something in there for everybody. And um, if people want to get your book on, or the book on um, 8th of March, is it through Amazon? Or it will be on, available on Amazon on the 8th of March, on International Women's Day. And it's really, I think it's really appropriate because it is, I really, it's really funny how true to Tikkun's vision it is because, you know, Shaul always felt that, you know, in my experience, that when people have less on their mind, they can do more in the world. And, I, and that was really my vision for the book. You know, it's like if people can see, if they can take their thinking less seriously, then they've got more space to do other things. And, and, and hopefully, and, and, and even if that doesn't happen, even if they could just have, a bit of reflection because I know it's so hard for, women, for anyone to take time for reflection, especially women when they feel so obligated with so many obligations. But even just taking a time out for themselves is a, a gift in itself. And to me, to give people that gift to take some time out to reflect, it, 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 it would be a gift to people in and itself, whether or not it helps them in any other ways. Who knows? <laughs> um. <laughs> I just got into my head, and I don't know if it's appropriate to ask this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway because it just got into my head. Um, what would you think about doing an audio book? Yeah, I'd be open to it. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how you go about doing an audio book, but you know. <laughs> I'd be open to it. I've got to say that, you know, as, as you mentioned, I do have a job that's like four plus days a week. And so, and with everything else juggling, it's been a, I think, gargantuan effort, even that is. <laughs> It's maybe an understatement, but um, but yes, no, I'd be open. To, I'm open to everyone. It's really a pleasure to speak to you today. And I'm, I'm, it's, I think, you know, some of us um, contributors, we had a meeting about what our vision for the book was and where we thought it could go. And, and I'm really, and I, 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 I just want to put it out there and see what happens and hopefully it'll have a life of its own. And, 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 and I think for me, it's really interesting because my job, ironically, is as a project manager, I manage campaigns and services and things like that and usually plan things quite a lot. And with this, it's been very different. It's very been very soul led, and it's been very it's led itself. So 
as I said before, the conversations with people led to different conversations. And then, and I, and I have to trust that this also will find its own way and I can put as much effort as I can and, and everyone else will too, and we'll see what happens. So I'm really open to ideas, to, you know, what people do with it or how people want to use it or anything. So, yes. Um, Has anybody yeah. got any questions for um, George? Or any comments or anything, you know, want to know more about what she's been talking about so far? I just want to say that um, uh, you know, George asked um, uh, me to contribute to the book and I did. And it was only recently that I got a copy of the book and I started reading through some stories. I've only got as far as five or six now, but every single one. I was just, and your introduction, I was really blown away. It's actually, I, I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of the book. So I'm so interested to see what it does out there. And it's, uh, it, 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 it must, the, the five or six I read, um, you know, I, re, I, I can't remember if I related to everything in them, but I was definitely moved by each story. Um, yeah, it's a great read, and it's I'm, I'm it's, it's, I'm really excited to see what it does what it does for people out there in the world. So it's more a comment than a question, but uh, um, yeah, I'll just I'll just reiterate. I've read I didn't read it all the way through, but I read some of the draft, and um, I just love the variety, the fact that and the the length of them were just right because it was sort of like bite size. And I'm not very good at reading books, to be honest with you. I'm, but it is sort of suited my style because they were just the right sort of length for me to read in one go. So I, I really enjoyed what I read so far as well. So, but that was the other thing that I thought about it was that the stories were short, but they really were deep and meaningful. Yes, like, exactly. I didn't think I get so much from a you know relatively short story, but yeah, I did. Thank you. It's really great to have you as part of it. It's really amazing. Thank you. And I guess that was the other thing that was really important. Like for me, it was really important to get authentic voices. Like I just wanted people who had stories to tell and in, in their authentic voice. And to me, it wasn't about, you know, getting the best writers. There are some amazing writers in there and then there are some authentic voices. And to me, that was the most important. And I was really supported in that by, I was very lucky that, you know, Carol Burroughs and, and Lucy Sheffield helped me co-edit the you know copy edit with me and we all sort of checked against each other and we really our main thing was to stay true to people and just tweak it around the edges so that it, it read as best as it possibly could be and that, that to me was the most important thing because we didn't want to lose people's authentic voices because we're all individuals and we all have such amazing you know, so such amazing things to offer people and there was such wisdom in 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 what people shared so thank you for, for that Hi. Hi. Um, yes, I, I also contributed. And uh, when I was asked, I didn't quite realize just uh, what was to become of this project. And uh, I have also been blown away. And, and I'm excited by the thinking about the impact that it can have on uh, whoever reads it, women, men, anyone. But it's, it's really nice, it makes me feel like it's special to belong. I feel like I belong to it already a small community that, of women that uh, can expand. Uh, whoever reads it can join the community. <laughs> and um, I love the diversity and the, and the different voices as well. I've been reading it and uh, I actually, I knew it was going to be good. I had, I kind of thought it was going to be good, but I didn't think it was going to be so profound and impactful. So um, I feel quite, um, um, I feel quite, quite um, honored to be part of this. And um, I'm, I'm excited and curious to see what was going to happen when it goes out, and um, and uh, it's such a great topic, great title, uh, and I resonate with it so massively. I, I had, I know that there's 
that there were areas of my life where I was very serious. I took life very seriously, motherhood and relationships and, you know, and uh, funny enough, there were the areas that didn't kind of, they didn't come easy. I, I, I don't think I was doing particularly well in those areas. And, and then, uh, uh, you know, the understanding of the principle just made, made the whole, my life lighten up. It, everything became easier and more fun and less serious. So I think we can all take so much from that because we don't even realize just how, how intense and serious we can get about stuff. And then it, it just gets so difficult. <laughs> Everything is, feels so difficult. And um, it's one of the gifts, isn't it, of, of the understanding is just to find yourself lighten, lightening up. And, uh, it's funny, isn't it? Because it's like constant, like for me, oh my God, every moment of this book, I'm up again, you know, every every task or everything I'm up against my serious thinking about you know who can I speak to who can I not speak to or am I scared to speak to this person or can I really write to this person and see if they'll review you know like and it's a really it's really funny like it's it's been really I don't know if entertaining is the right word but to watch myself go in and out of serious thinking and it's quite ironic that it's been a constant you know the whole time even to you know I was just laughing I I we were doing the proof last week and we were so focused on the text and then we were about to upload it to Amazon I noticed the eyes on the illustration were missing and it was quite funny because you know and and I just laughed at that but you know I think in in my in a previous life in my day job it wouldn't have been so funny I, I know it wouldn't have been so funny and I know that you know I I would have had sleepless nights over things um and I'm not saying I didn't have sleepless nights but I had sleepless nights because I was so excited and my brain was so busy and I had buzzing with ideas rather than the other kind, so, yeah. And how what was it like getting people together to collaborate on the book or to get the articles to you? Did you find that process difficult or easy? Or... No, I, I, it was just very, it took its time and I think I gave it its time. And I, I think Carol was very wise at the beginning. She advised, don't put a time on it, just take it as it comes. And, you know, and I, I just gradually and I also didn't have time I only have like Friday mornings and stuff so I gradually just spoke to people over time and then things would come in and we would edit them and it just took quite a few months it took a long time and then all of a sudden it suddenly starts coming together at the end and then we decided on a date and that's it but um yeah well I wouldn't say that it was it was actually I, it was more that like I was quite addicted to having the conversations and Carol's like mm, I think you've probably got enough now <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop because I was enjoying it so much. Um, so, um, yeah. And have you ever put a book together before or is this your I've first? never put a book together before. I mean, I do, I'm very lucky in that I do come from a sort of design management background, as I say, I manage campaigns and I'm used to working with designers and things. So I do do that in my day job. So it's, it's quite a natural thing to me, but to do a book is quite different. Um, and it's a whole other skill set and um, but obviously you know managing you know different versions of things that that's all quite day-to-day -day for me um, but you know and now even you know but yes but doing a book is a new thing and, and also now having to um, just talk about it and be you know the, the with you like tonight is not something I would normally do you know <laughs> so it's a new experience for me I mean I usually, you know, I, I'm very, very enjoy my my uh, my partnership with Farrah and we're like a bit of a double act. And so for me to on my own talking to you tonight is 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 is, is not something I normally do. So I have to, I guess I better get used to this a little bit more. So any plans for another book? Oh, I think, you know, there's lots of stories to tell. Let's see how this one goes. But, you know, the beauty in this is that there are so many there, there's so many stories that's going to be told um and I'm sure even the people in the book would have lots more stories to tell, let alone other people who you know didn't for whatever reason manage to take part or I didn't even manage to speak to because I had a very long list and I, I didn't get through it all because as I said people suggested people and I just went with the feeling and I think it it's been great because it has led me to people I'd never met and 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 heard things I never heard so I think it's really been beautiful in that way but but yes, there's, there's lots of potential. Let's, let's see what happens <laughs> before we commit to anything else. <laughs> um, has anybody else got any comments or questions? Or no? 
I think um, it's also the title. I just think it's very clever because um, it's not sort of the way I considered life exactly. Like, I mean, I've had so many things that have changed for me from understanding the principles, but I'd never sort of quite seen it about the seriousness of it. Like, I mean, we obviously, you know, doing the work we do, we hear all the time, I feel lighter, I feel lighter, which is perhaps almost the opposite. Well, I'd say it's the opposite of heavy more than serious, but, um, you know, for, for me, my, my chapter was about relationships and that was what I wrote about, but I didn't really, re I, I knew I was intense about it and I knew I had a lot of thinking about it, but I didn't quite see how I'd made it as such a serious topic that needed to be taken so seriously. I'd never really quite looked at it like that until you gave us the title. Um, and it's just an interesting thing to wonder about, about any of our areas of our lives, how we're taking them too seriously. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's true. It's, it, for me, anyway, I think, and maybe it's because I'm in, being in the conversation of this particular I literally see my seriousness everywhere. <laughs> and I'm in and out of it all day. And I get caught up and then I not, and then I, and I see, I watch it all the time. Um, but I think, you know, I used to be a lot more intense about it. And I used to think that if I was, if it was, if I felt serious, then it really was serious. And that meant you had to get anxious and you had to have palpitations and you had to get worried. And, blah. and now I, I don't have that relationship to it. It's just a signal that I'm being serious and okay. And, and, and see what comes next, but it doesn't mean so I don't get caught up all the time and, and watch myself go in and out of it. just leaving space in case anyone's got anything else to say the other thing i just was to say that thing that you said that shall said to you the less you have on the mind the mind the more you can do in the world is um is so true and i really noticed noticed how well i noticed that massively how i can get on now i've got less on my mind instead of just being weighed down by everything on my mind and all the reasons that I can't get on have gone so I can just get on um but it's the same with seriousness isn't it whenever we put it on to something it just yeah just takes us in a really unhelpful direction and sort of away from getting on yeah and definitely for me it's funny I really saw myself I remember um I think when I was working at Tukun actually when I was you know before I learned you know I had had such a deep understanding I remember thinking oh it, you know there's too much to do there's too much to do and and there were all these emails flying in and and then I remember <laughs> I think at, by like three o'clock in the afternoon I was like actually I've not actually done anything I've just thought about how much I've got to do <laughs> and it's just so innocuous isn't it you're just like sitting there thinking about how much you've got to do and you can't do it all but you're not actually doing anything there's just so much time spent on the thinking the you know, and, and it's just so funny if you don't realise it until you do. Um, yeah. And isn't it funny how we think that when we are serious, we'll be more responsible and, and uh, caring and, you know, and if we are serious, then we care. It's a total kind of misunderstanding of what, uh, being a, a responsible, for instance, responsible parent, you mm. know, or uh, in a relationship, uh, we give the ver our very best when we are lighthearted yeah. and, play and playful, not when we are so intense and serious. And we also so crap comes up when we are when we are in that serious state of mind, and and. Uh, and everything feels hard. There's yeah. a big, massive misunderstanding about what, you know, uh, how to give our very best and what that is about. And um, when I'm serious, I just move away from my heart and I totally get into my head. And then uh, the quality of what I give 
has, has that kind of intense, uncomfortable kind of vibe that nobody really wants to be around. <laughs> we're not fun to be with when we, when we are so... Um, and so, yeah, I wrote about my mom. She was a, such a serious woman and it was not fun to be her daughter, you know. And uh, But with the understanding, I had this amazing revelation of how that wasn't her. That was just what she thought she had to do and how she had to be. So it was a great gift to see that just before she passed away, you know, and to appreciate what that was about, what, what you know, what I was experiencing was. So, yeah, it, it, you know, it's, um, I think we can all relate to that, to the topic, you know, and uh, there's so much to be seen in there. Yeah, and so in so many areas as well, isn't it? In so many areas and in all aspects and stages of life. I think it was really interesting, like, some of the stories reflect on people's whole lives, you know, like some of them really look at childhood through to now and their experiences and what, what they've seen about what they made up as children and how they carry through to adult health. And that, I think that's also a really interesting aspect, aside from the, you know, the topic based ones. It's really interesting to see those life reflections as well, because um, I'm sure we can all see patterns in certain areas that we've we've kind of made up in those areas. In, in, relation to seriousness or intensity or whatever you want to call it. I, I was thinking about in relationship how I used to value the seriousness of it <laughs> and now I value the lightheartedness of it. It's like that is what I value. I love that um, my relationship is lighthearted. I love that. It's like the best. Whereas before I really it's not that I liked those bits, but that's what I thought they were about, that you have to sit down and have serious one-to-ones about what's wrong with the relationship. I thought that's what you did, and I was always calling, you know, who I was with in for one of those. <laughs> and I'm laughing about it now, but it certainly wasn't funny and didn't do the relationship any good at all. But it's so that's what I thought, that's, that's what I thought you did, and nobody seemed to dimensions anywhere that that isn't what you did <laughs> um so yeah it's crazy it's crazy and now you know just I I didn't I did I suppose I don't know what I'd have thought if I sort of seen forward to the light-heartedness I live in now regarding my relationship I don't know if I'd have thought I'd have thought from my perspective back then I don't know what I'd have thought of that <laughs> I didn't even know that was a possibility and yeah, I think I, I can relate to that. not taking it seriously. <laughs> yes, I think I can relate to that too because I wrote about my work experiences and how I, you know, took it all very seriously at work and how I had to control every aspect of it because if I wasn't controlling it, then, you know, so I'd work really hard to control everything. And, and it was silly because I used to do events and all, all, obviously things would go wrong and I'd know how to deal with them, but I couldn't, couldn't, didn't see that. I couldn't trust that I would do that. So I'd have to like dot every, you know, cross every T and dot every I and, and get really intense about it and and was very uncomfortable in the unknown so there was no space for the unknown and and now it's really funny because the projects I do people say can you just do this and then I just step into the unknown and it all figures itself out which is a very different way of planning and thinking and and the, you know it's just a very different way of being in work or in life to be like that and, and the book has pushed that even more to the extreme I think so it's, it's interesting um yeah you get a lot more done don't you <laughs> so yeah I think it's interesting how you're talking about control as well and how we naturally whether it's the way society wants us to be we try and control things or we can try to control things and I was thinking when Susan was talking about her relationships my past relationship I didn't sort of hold meetings to talk about things what I'd do instead was I'd hold on to things and my ex used to say I had a database. And when he wasn't expecting it, a few months after he'd forgotten whatever he'd done wrong and he didn't realise he'd done it wrong in the first place anyway, I suddenly bring it up like six months later because <laughs> I had my database of things that he'd done wrong to me. I'd have to throw in his face six months after he'd done them and he'd forgotten whatever he'd done anyway. So just reminded me. <laughs>
Has anyone else got any thoughts or comments? If not, I'll wrap it up. Okay. Well, this is going to be premiered on International Women's Day to coincide with the launch of the book. So it will be premiering. <laughs> that's just a proof. That's why it's got a line by it. It's, pretty, it's the proof that so it will look nicer than this. But it just <laughs> so yeah, so the premiere of this will be at seven o'clock on the eighth of March, which is International Women's Day, and it coincides with the launch of the book Life Less Serious. Okay, thank you for joining me, and um, see you soon. <laughs> thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye